Hi everyone, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, June 19th, 2021. Welcome to another Saturday edition of our YouTube videos. We like to break these videos into two parts. First part where I give you guys uh, some information on a great options trading strategy. And then part two is what we call our Saturday synopsis where I like to go over the charts, take a look at the stock indexes, individual stocks to see where they've been and where they may be going. So thank you for joining me. Sit back, re relax, and let's jump right into it. As you can see on your screen, we will be talking about deep in the money call options, specifically buying deep in the money call options. It is the only option buying strategy that I recommend in my 30 years being in this business. And the book that I've written, Get Rich with Options, I lay out four strategies, four options trading, four options trading strategies, three of which are option selling strategies, one of which is an option buying strategy strategy. And that is what we will be talking about today. Buying deep in the money call options. I continue to get emails from people every week, which is great. I love getting your emails and they want to know if, it, if it's now the right time to buy stocks or get bullish on stocks or get bullish on the market. Well, there's always, you can get in at any time, obviously, sometimes better than others, but you know, if you're going to get into the market, you can get in as the market's going up or you can get in as the market's going down. It really doesn't matter. If you have a long-term strategy, you got to get in at some point, right? You got to get into the stock market at some point. It's It's been the greatest wealth generator uh, of any investment over the last 200 years or so. So my, my, my answer is yes, you can always get into the market. If you want to try to time the market, that's up to you. But what we're going to talk about today is, is definitely a bullish strategy based on an options trading method. And that is called buying deep in the money call options. So for some of you that don't know what that is, I will explain it. And for others that might know what that is, uh, you know, stick around because I'm going to show you why buying deep in the money call options is a superior method to just outright buying stocks. Okay. So if you're bullish on a position, if you're bullish on a stock, you don't have a position yet, what can you do? How do you get how do you get into that stock with a bullish position? Well, number one is what most people would do is that they buy shares of stock, which is a great way to get, get into the stock. And depending on your wallet and how much money you how much money you have to put into the investment, will decide how many shares of stock you can buy. But as an alternative, right here at the top line, buying deep in the money calls is an amazing alternative to buying the stocks. But just remember, this is a bullish, bullish strategy. So if you're not bullish, you don't want to be buying stock, you know, and you don't want to be buying call options. Okay, so let's get this out there right up front. Buying deep in the money call options is a very bullish strategy, just as buying stock is. Okay. And the thing we have to do is we have to compare this strategy to what it would cost to buy 100 shares of stock because each option contract consists of 100 shares of stock if you exercise that call option. So we have to always compare to what buying 100 shares of stock would, would cost. Okay, so let's just get that out there right up front. Buying deep in the money calls is an option trading strategy and it mimics buying the stock, but there's huge benefits to buying the call options instead. And we're gonna talk about that right here. The first big benefit of buying call options versus buying the stock is that the call options cost a lot less. There's less cost, less upfront cost when you buy call options, okay? So that's number one. Number two, there's less downside risk when you buy call options versus buying stock. And number three right here is you, have, you get a greater return on your capital a much better return on investment, ROI. These three things right here, these first three right here, is the main reasons why you would want to buy deep in the money call options versus buying stock. Less cost, less downside risk, and greater return on your capital. I'm going to show you an example of why that is. My intention here is to make or to help all of you become deep in the money call option buyers instead of stock buyers. After you see these examples, 
I hope to convert you all over to call option buyers instead of stock buyers. Now we also, the way I like to look at this strategy is that it's a, it's a longer term buy and hold strategy. Most people who buy stocks who are looking for that long term appreciation, you hold on to those stocks for a while. Same thing you can do with these deep in the money call options. Now call options or, or all options have expiration dates that can go out almost three years in time. So you can choose any length you want. For me, what I consider a longer term trade is at least six months, six months to a year. Okay, you want to hold on to this thing. You want to give yourself some time to be right. If, you, if you're bullish on a stock, on a day-to-day -day basis, the stock could be very erratic. But over the long run, if the stock you know, follows its, its earnings, if it has good earnings and good profits and good sales, the stock price will follow that to the upside over time. So you want to give yourself time to be correct, right? If you buy a stock and one day and you sell it the next, it's just a crapshoot. So you want to give yourself time to be correct. Okay, so I consider that, you know, at least six months to a year out in time. And, and the key to the deep in the money call option strategy is picking an, an option strike price with a high delta. Now, just remember, all options have different strike prices. All options have different expiration dates. And all options have a different delta. Well, what is a delta? The delta is, well, there's a couple definitions of delta. Every option has a delta. You can get delta um, information from your option chain that you have at your at your broker's trading platform. Okay, but the the easiest term to understand about delta the delta tells you how much that option price will change in conjunction when the stock price changes. Okay, so if the stock goes up, obviously you want your call option value to go up as well. You know, the reason why you buy stock is because you want the stock to go up. It's the same thing when you buy call options. You buy that call option at a price you want that price to go up. So eventually maybe you can sell it for a profit, right? So if the Delta tells you how much the stock price will change when the stock price changes, you want a high correlation, right? If the stock moves, you want that call option to move. The Delta tells you how much the, the, the option price will move. Deltas range from zero to a hundred. It's actually 0% to a hundred percent. So choosing an option with a very high Delta in my assessment, a delta of 90% is what we'd be shooting for. So that means the option price is going to move 90% of whatever the stock price moves. Higher or lower, you have to understand, if the stock price drops, the call option price will drop as well. So remember, this is a very bullish strategy. So if the stock goes up, it's good. If the stock goes down, you know, it's not so good. But anyway, the reasons why is that you'll have the less cost, less downside risk, and greater return on capital. So the delta we're talking about is you want a high delta because you want this option price to move when the stock price does. And I'll show you all this in the example. Now, when you get to the expiration of the option, because all options have an expiration, you'll have to you'll have to do something. You're going to have to make a choice, and that it, you have three choices at expiration. You can either sell your call option back to the market for whatever it's worth at that time. It could end up being a gain or a loss, depending on where the stock moves over that period of time. Uh, you can exercise that call option if it's still in the money and turn that call option into actual shares of stock. Or you can roll the option, which means what you'll do is you'll, you'll get out of the call option, meaning you'll sell that call option back to the market, and you'll buy a new deep in the money call option at a longer term expiration date. So you're in the trade all the time. So at expiration, you have to come up with a, you have a choice to make. Now, you, like I said, you can sell it and you'll get whatever money that option is worth at that time. And you'll have to figure out what, if you, if you made a profit or a loss, uh, you know, cause the option price is always going to be determined where that stock price is at expiration. Now, if you exercise it, you're going to turn that call option into actual shares of stock and you'll have to pay for the balance of the, the stock at that time. And I'll show you what that means. Or you can roll it where you're just, selling the first option out and you're buying a new one and you can stay in the trade for another six months or another year out in time. So you can continuously roll this thing for years and years on end. And by doing so, that'll keep your costs very low. Now, the, the, uh, the drawbacks here are down here. Obviously, you can lose money if the stock drops. Okay, that's no different than if you just bought the stock itself and the stock dropped, you're gonna lose money. Okay, so that's a drawback to any bullish strategy is that you can lose money. That's just part of investing. 
And the other thing about the other downside that some might see is that when you buy call options, you don't receive any dividends that the company pays out to the shareholders because you're not a shareholder, you're a call option buyer. So you don't get any dividends and you don't receive any voting rights. You can't vote your shares at the uh, annual uh, meeting of shareholders. And what I say here is, does that even matter? Does that matter? It doesn't matter to me because the benefits of these things right here, less cost, less, less downside risk and greater return on capital, I think overpowers uh, this drawback of no dividends or voting rights. But you know that's up to you to decide. So let's just go over this one more time because I'm, I'm laying the groundwork here for converting you into call option buyers instead of stock um, sh share buyers. The deep in the money call option is, is an alternative an amazing alternative to buying shares outright. And the reasons why right here, these three reasons why. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example of how it works and why it works and why you may want to buy deep in the money call options. The next time you're thinking of buying at least a hundred shares of stock. So let's take a quick look at, um, let's go to our option chain here. And we're going to look at, uh, AMD advanced micro devices. Actually, let's bring up the chart first. And so here's advanced micro devices. And a little bit later when we do our Saturday synopsis, we're going to look at the, the, the stock chart a little bit deeper, but AMD advanced micro devices. Let's just say you're bullish on AMD and you want to buy some shares of stock, but you're, 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 you're going to listen to me and you're going to potentially buy a deep in the money call option. Now, AMD finished at $84.65 yesterday, Friday, uh, June 18th, 2021. So we're going to use $84.65 as our price of AMD right then and there. And if you wanted to buy shares of AMD, 100 shares, you'd have to pay $84.65 per share. And I'm going to show you why buying a deep in the money call option instead is a much superior trade to buying the shares outright. So let's go into our option chain here. This is an option chain for AMD. We got call options on the left, put options on the right, and we're going to choose an option strike price with at least a 90% Delta. Now over here, in the call option chain, we have the bid ask prices for each call option. Um, and then we have the, the Greeks. These are the Greeks, the Delta, Gamma, Vega, Theta. All we have to worry about right now is the Delta column. So if you have an option chain at your option broker, make sure you have the Delta column installed in your option chain. Here are the strike prices. Okay. As you know, all options have different strike prices. But we're going to choose an option strike with it with a 90 percent delta at least okay so what you do is you scan down the strike prices and you scan over to the delta column until you as you move up uh, as the strike prices get higher the deltas get smaller so we're going to look for okay so here's our delta of 91.911 so that's 91.1 percent delta and we see that it's the 60 dollar strike price 60 dollar calls okay so we've, we've, we've keyed in on the 60 strike because it has a 91% Delta. So instead of buying a hundred shares of AMD at $84 and 65 cents, which would cost you $8,465, we're going to buy this $60 call option. And here's where it went out yesterday, 24, 20 bid at 2750 offer. So we always try to do something right in between the bid ask as our fair value. Whenever you're buying or selling options, doesn't matter what it is. And even in a different example than this, you got put options over here. You always want to trade something in between the bid and ask because that's where the fair value would be. Okay. So for our $60 call option, $26 per contract is what fair value would be. It's, it's somewhere in between, um, these two, bid and ask price. So we're going to use $26 per contract. And to figure out the actual amount in actual dollars, you have to multiply these numbers by 100 because there's a hundred shares in each option contract. It's the option multiplier. So $26 per contract times 100 is $2,600. So let me bring up my little spreadsheet here 
And I'm going to go over the example of why buying a deep in the money call option is so superior to buying 100 shares of stock. Now, in this example, we're comparing buying 100 shares of AMD at $84.65 compared to buying the $60 call option. Now, as I let me go back to the option chain real quick. We're looking at the December 17th, 2021 options, 181 days in the future. So that's about a six month option. Okay. You can choose any expiration date you want, but as we're using longer term trades, we want to go at least six months into the future. That is the December, 2021. It's not, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just whatever you choose. But in, for this example, this is example only, not a live recommendation. We're going out to a six month trade. So let's take a look at our, our spreadsheet here. Now, some of the, the numbers here, the stock price is 84.65 and the, the option cost is $26 per contract. So we're gonna use this little legend here to help us understand what we're doing, okay? Now, one important thing you have to understand is where is the break even on the option purchase compared to the stock price? You always need to know what your, your call option break even price is, okay? How do you figure that out? Well, right here, DITM stands for deep in the money. Deep in the money break even is $86 per share. How do I come up with $86? Well, you have the strike price of 60 plus the option cost, which is $26, right? $26 plus 60 equals $86, okay? So you always want to know where your break even is compared to the stock price. So the stock price is $84.65. The call option break even is $86. So that's pretty close, pretty close. By buying the call option, you're gonna have a break even price. What do I mean by break even? Well, as soon as AMD stock itself gets above $86 a share, you're, you're making money, okay? It's a little higher than the current stock price, but not much higher. It's $1.35 higher. So all AMD has to do in the next six months is move up $1.35 per share and you're break even, okay? So you need to know, yeah, the stock current stock price and you wanna know what the, the call option break even is. The deep in the money call option cost, as we know, is $2,600. If you buy that call option, it will cost you $2,600 that you have to pay right up front. Your broker will debit your account $2,600. If you were to buy 100 shares of AMD outright, it would cost $8,465. So right then and there, you're saving $5,865. Right off the bat, you're getting a savings of $5,865. And what does that mean? Well, that means you have $5,865 less risk. Because if AMD craps out and drops to $0 per share, you're only going to lose $2,600 where everyone else will lose $8,465. So you have a huge downside cushion dollar-wise compared to buying the shares of stock itself, okay? So you have 69% less risk, less capital on the line compared to buying 100 shares of stock. And I'm going to show you the numbers here. The percentage return is always triple, 300% more than any return you'll get on the stock purchase. Okay, so now let's let's take a look at the numbers here. In this little example, I have different levels of the stock price. Okay, here's the stock, different levels of stock price, and I'll show you how much you can make or lose on the stock and, and the stock return, and over here is, I'll show you what you can make or lose on buying the call option and its return on investment. So at $0 per share, if AMD craps out and drops to zero, everyone's gonna lose 100% of their investment. But the key is, well, look at the dollar amounts. With the option, you'll lose $2,600. The stock, they'll lose $8,465, okay? That's your, your five, over $5,800 savings right there on the downside. If the stock drops to $25, you're still only losing $2,600, and stock buyers are losing almost $6,000. So you're still doing better. At $50 a share, you're, you're still losing $2,600. You're gonna lose the maximum on the call option if the stock finishes 
below the strike price. Okay. So at $50, you're still losing $2,600. That's 100% of the investment. But the stock buyers are still losing more on a dollar basis. The return for the stock buyer is minus 41%. We're at a minus 100%. But you got to look at the actual absolute dollar numbers. You're still losing less than the stock buyers, which is, which is a big deal. So now let's move on to the break-even prices. The stock current stock price is $84.65. Stock buyers have zero dollar return, zero percentage return. On the deep in the money call option, you're losing $135 and you're losing 1.6%. Okay. The stock price break even and the call option break even are very close to each other. Okay. That's what you want. You want to try to get that break even pretty close to the current stock price. You won't, you'll never get it there, but the smaller the difference, the better. Now at $86, you see here's the break even on the call option and the call, the, the stock buyers are making a little bit amount of money. But here's where it gets great on the upside. At $100 a share, the stock buyers are making $1,535. The call buyers are making $1,400. But here's the, this is where the return gets nice and juicy. The stock buyers have an 18% return call option buyers have a 54% return on your money. Why is that? Because you're putting up so much less money uh, to get into the trade. So anything that you make is going to be magnified three times greater, three times greater than, than the stock purchase return on investment. Okay. At $150 a share, you're making $6,400 for the call. The stock buyers are making 65.35. The call, the, the stock buyers are always going to make a little bit more on the upside dollar wise, just a little bit more, but look at the returns, 77% compared to 246% return. And at $200 a share, you're making 11,400 compared to 11,535, 136% return, 438% return, always more than triple, at least triple the returns by buying the call options. And the dollar gains are gonna be very, very similar on each one. So it's the returns on the upside are triple. On the downside, the dollar amounts are, are less. So you're, you're, you're winning in all, in all cases on the upside and the downside. I mean, no one likes to lose money, but losing a lot less money is better, okay? So that's the thing. Now you're always going to compare the, the profit or loss based on what the option costs. Okay. Remember the option costs $2,600 and at these prices, that's where the, 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 here's where the returns are, how much money you can make. Okay. Now, sometimes these numbers can confuse some people. So I want to sh actually show you how to calculate the, the values here. So let's just say AMD gets up to $200 a share. So you have to subtract out the, you have to subtract out the, the, the strike price first. So 200, and I'm just doing on my calculator to make sure I'm doing it right at the same time. So 200 minus the 60, $60 is the strike price is 140. Okay, but you have to subtract out the option cost, which is 26. So minus 26 is 114 times $100 because the 100 multiplier. So that's where you come up with your $11,400 return. Okay, that's, that's how you do it. 200 minus 60, which is the strike price, minus out 26, $26 per contract. That'll get you the uh, P and L and you times that by hundred. Okay. So that's how you figure out the numbers. So clearly we can see up and down the stock price level, you're doing just as good dollar wise, triple the returns on the downside. You're losing less than the stock buyers. And, uh, Although the return, this is, this should be minus 100%. Forgot to do that there. This is all negative 100%, but the dollar amounts are less. So you're getting better on the upside and you're losing less on the downside. So here's the, just remember this, your savings, almost $5,900. 
your returns are triple and you're less downside risk, 69% down less downside risk. So the benefits of buying the deep in the money call option totally outweigh the benefits of buying shares of stock. Now, in this case, the option cost $2,600. If you bought 100 shares, it would be $84.65, okay? So you always wanna look at these numbers. Now, if you don't have $2,600 in your account and you can't, you just can't buy that deep in the money call option because you don't have $2,600, that's fine. You know, that's, that's gonna be up to you to decide how much money you have to play with. Now, if you still wanna get long or bullish on the stock, well, then you just buy a couple shares of stock, AMD, you know, whatever your wallet can afford. If you can only buy 10 shares of stock at, at this eight price, at this $84 price, that'll cost you $840 and change. You know, if that's all you have, well, then you just buy some shares of stock. But in order to buy this deep in the money call option, you have to have at least $2,600 in your account. Now you can go back to the option chain and let me move myself over here a little bit. You can look at different strike prices. If you have, you know, $1,000 to spend on a call option, well, then you could look at maybe the $82.5 or $85 call strike. And here's the prices. You know, this would be, you know, $950 maybe. But remember, the delta, that's about a 55% delta. What does that mean? Well, if the stock goes up $10, the option price is going to match it by about 55%. So your option price will go up you know, $5, a little more than $5 if the stock price goes up $10. Is that enough bang for your buck? You know, it's a 50% you're getting, the option price is gonna track that by 55%. You know, for some people that's fine. It's a lot less money. It's $950 versus what we're buying at $2,600. So you have to decide based on your wallet, you know, how much money you have to spend, how much bang you're looking to get for your buck. Um, it's up to you. Now, if you bought this, if you bought the $85 call option for $950, well, $950 is a lot less than, you know, $8,465. You have a, you know, a huge difference, but you're only getting 55% of the move. Just remember, if you're buying call options, you want that option price to move and you want it to move a lot. But the only way it's going to move a lot is if you choose a high delta. In my opinion, 90% delta is high enough. Okay. People say, well, why don't you, you know, people say, well, why don't you just buy the, um, you know, the 37 and a half calls has a 99% Delta, but it's cost would be close to $4,700. Okay. Here's the bid ask midpoints about 4750, $4,750 versus $2,600 versus, you know, $950 for different strike price levels, different, price levels, different deltas. So you have to decide. Okay, you have to decide what works best for you. My, my goals are 90% delta, six months out in time. And whatever the option cost, you know, you have to pay it or, you know, if you can afford it. All right, so that's your lesson. Let me bring up the document again. I'll move myself back over here. Here's the deep in the money call, my assessment, why I love it versus buying stock. So consider the strategy, you know, it's a, it's a much better way to use your available capital. All right. So we're going to move on to part two of our videos, which is our Saturday synopsis where we take a look at the charts. But before we do that, I want to just bring up my website here. Let it get everyone familiar with what we're doing here. Smart option seller website, smartoptionseller.com. We're all about selling put options selling put option spreads. That's our bread and butter. Although we're talking about deep in the money call options, we're option sellers first and foremost. So if you've never heard about selling put options, get our free put selling basics guide. It's an ebook. Go to our website, put selling basics guide here, put in your name and email address. We'll se send you a free copy. Okay. Put selling is what we like to do. And for those of you looking a little bit more, we have a few services. We have, we run a couple newsletters, we sell put options, we sell put option spreads. These are our two different newsletters, just click on them. And we also have our one-on-one -on -one coaching where we teach people how to trade options. We're, we've been very successful with that. Okay, so that's our, our website. Let's move on to our Saturday synopsis. Let's take a look at some charts and see what we can do here. And we're going to 
um, move the, give me a second here to resize the chart a little bit. Okay, here we go. So we want to look at some individual stocks. We always take a look at the S&P 500 first as represented by the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. It's, it's a, an easy way, an easy investment to get into the, the market as a whole. If you want a, uh, exposure to the S&P 500, you can buy the SPY. What we do is we look at the charts, see what's been going on, and we look for patterns. We follow the, the trend lines, we follow support and resistance, and we try to draw some patterns to get a gauge of where the market might move to next. Now, if you've been following us for a while, we keep some of these older patterns on the page just to see how they've turned out. I have my blue 20-day simple moving average, my red 50-day simple moving average, the green or orange, um, 200 day simple moving average down here is the 14 day RSI, which is an overbought oversold indicator. My levels are 80, excuse me, 80 on the upside, 20 on the downside, 80, 20. Okay. So this is the S and P 500. The market was looking pretty good. Um, we had been, had this ascending triangle on here, which we drew recently, meaning that the market was looking to move higher, blast above the resistance line. But the market had a different uh, different idea this past week, especially yesterday, Friday, had a pretty big down move in the market. But that was some, getting some rotation between the S&P and Dow and the NASDAQ stocks. And we'll bring up some NASDAQ stocks and we'll see what happened here. So the S&P 500 got above the resistance line for a couple days here, but the, the, the latter half of last week um, got knocked back down and has moved now below the triangle and has moved below the 50-day moving average. So um, I'm not concerned about it, not concerned about it yet. The reasoning why for the, for the down move the last couple days, it all comes down to the inflation and interest rate narrative that's happening here in the U.S., the U.S. Federal Reserve had a meeting on Wednesday this last week, and they they have been holding interest rates down for a very long time now, especially since the pandemic last year. And they're now thinking that they may have to raise interest rates a little bit sooner than they thought from their last you know big meeting in March. The reasoning why? Because inflation is starting to kick in. The economies are, are, are roaring back. People are flush with cash. And we've had a lot of disruptions for the supply of everything. Everything in price is going up. Everything that you buy has been going up in price. So the inflation is starting to heat up. And the, the way that the, the Federal Reserve tries to combat that inflation is that they have to raise interest rates. Okay. So when interest rates rise, top stocks typically will sell off. Why? Because now fixed, in some, fixed income securities are more competitive, so people might pull their money out of stocks and put put them into fixed income securities. So if they pull money out of stocks, that means stocks are going to sell off and maybe drop. I don't buy into that so much because the interest rate rises are still very far away, maybe towards the end of 2022, like a year and a half from now. So people have a knee-jerk knee reaction to the narrative like that. But you have to remember... You're not going to get a lot of money, a return on your money by investing in fixed income securities, right? Um, where are you going to put your money? You're going to park your money in treasuries for 30 years and get, what is it, 2%, 3%? I don't even know, but I know it's not a lot. Versus stocks, which historically can return 7 to 10% per year just by investing in an S&P 500 index fund. So people are not going to pull all their money out of stocks and invest in income, fixed income securities. It's just not going to happen. But we get this knee-jerk reaction and people will sell stocks because they're scared of interest rates rising. Interest rates are going to rise, yes, down the road, but they're not going to, they're so low to begin with interest rates that it, it's not going to be enough to jolt everybody out of their, their stock positions. And the other thing is that the reason why stock prices go up is because these are, profitable companies. These companies are making products that people buy. 
So their sales and revenue numbers are going up. And when a company is profitable over time, that means their stock prices go up, go up over time. So are you telling me that even with a stock, even with a company being profitable, people are going to just sell out of all their shares of stock just because interest rates are going up? Absolutely not. So the stock market goes up over time. That's how it works. The stock market is made up of actual companies that create actual products that people actually buy that causes companies to have increasing sales over time. So the stock prices rise. Sure, interest rates may go up and stock prices may ebb and flow and come off, but over the long run, they'll continue to go up. They go up whether interest rates rises or not. That's how the, that's how the stock market works. Let's look at the monthly. Okay, so here's the S&P 500 going all the way back to early 1990s. Goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, and then it just goes up. The stock market goes up over time, regardless of what's happening around the world. World wars, pandemics, terrorist attacks. The market will always find its way to go higher because it's, it's made up of profitable companies. So the narrative about interest rates rising and inflation in the short term, knee jerk reaction, but in the long run, it will go up. So try not to get scared out of your positions. You know, if you're trading, if you're day trading or swing trading, prices are too erratic in the short term, but over the long run, they will go up. So you have to have a long term mentality. Okay. So on a short term, the market has sold off this week. Yes. And it has fallen below the ascending triangle that we've drawn here, and it has fallen below the 20 day and 50 day moving average. So what does that mean? Does that mean this is the end of the bull run and now a new bear market is, is upon us? I don't believe so, but, but stock prices sell off. The last time the S&P 500 or the SPY sold off was back here in early May, uh, you know, a little over a month ago. And look what it did. It bounced off the, you know, the, the 50 day moving average and went back up. Where we are here, we're still higher than where we are were a month ago. But people get scared. People get scared out of positions. You know, do what you will. Um, yes, the market on a short-term basis has fallen below some, some support areas. Does that mean it's just going to keep falling forever and never come back? Of course not. So you have to temper your mentality, temper your psychology to know, yes, the market's selling off, but it will go back up again. Uh, at some point. Now, if you, if you have very short term trades, you know, then this might be a concern for you, but if you have a longer term mentality, it's just another blip on the screen. Okay. What did people think when, what did people think when the market sold off here? Were they scared out? Maybe, but it bounced. What did people think when it sold off here? Did they get scared out? Maybe, but it bounced. So you have to look at the trajectory. It goes up, falls off, goes up, falls up, goes up, falls off, goes up, falls off. But the longer term trajectory is to the upside. So you have to have some patience. You have to have some emotional fortitude and stick with a longer term mentality. Okay. So S and P 500 still going up, still has a long term up move. Yes. Has a pullback, but I'm not too concerned about it. You know, the only thing that's going to really knock this back down is some other major catastrophe that we, that is unforeseen right now. At, you have to follow what the market is telling you. Okay. So that's the S and P 500. Let's take a look at the Dow and the NASDAQ. So let's look at the Dow because the Dow got hit pretty good this week. Um, it, it, it was the laggard of the three indexes. So the, here's the Dow industrial it has sort of been flatlining. And then it came off towards the end of this week here. Let me open this up. You can see this good little waterfall moved to the down. It went below the 20 day, went below the 50 day. That's a pretty good move for the Dow. If you look at the RSI, it's getting, it's come off pretty good. So it's starting to get down to some oversold levels. When it hits oversold, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna bounce back right then and there, but it just means that the, the selling should start to slow down. This is a pretty sizable move for the Dow over a week, week and a half. And that's why the RSI is getting closer to some oversold levels. So eventually it'll find its footing and then it'll start to go back up again. So the Dow was hit more than, than the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, but that's due to rotation. People are selling the Dow stocks to buy NASDAQ. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ here and I'll show you why the NASDAQ was really strong this week. Now we recently drew this, 
W pattern, which is typically a bullish pattern once it gets above the resistance line. It has not done that yet. Okay, here's the resistance line. But the, the NASDAQ really didn't sell off that much this week compared to the, the Dow and S&P 500. It just kind of meandered for five days, right? And when we get into some of the individual stocks, you'll see why. So the, the NASDAQ still wants to get above this resistance line. It's, it's above the 20-day and 50-day moving average, which is good. So the NASDAQ stocks have been strong. Let's take a look at some individual stocks, and I'll show you why the NASDAQ has been strong. Let's look at Amazon first. Amazon had a pretty monster week. You would think that everything was selling off, but no, not Amazon. Look at this nice, look at this big up move that Amazon had over the last two weeks or so. It's, it's above all the three major moving averages, but, but it's getting close to this long-term channel resistance. Okay, Amazon's been in, in this, this channel for you know about a year now has not been able to bust above or bust below. So it's making the move back up to the resistance. Will it get through it this time or will it get knocked back down? That's yet to be seen, yet to be seen. But when it gets through, that should be the catalyst to, to keep everything rolling to the upside. Let's take a look at Apple. You know I talk about Apple all the time because I'm long Apple. Apple finally had a decent move this week. Okay, the last couple weeks actually. Here's this. Here's Apple's move the last few weeks. Finally, has gotten above both the 50-day and the 20-day. It's still above the 200-day. Uh, it made this triple bottom here off the 200-day moving average. One, two, three. Triple bottoms are are usually a reliable symbol, a reliable indicator that if it can hold on the on the triple moves, it it should go up again and especially on the 200-day moving average. And look where it's gone. It's gone up nicely from about $123 a share up to you know 132 this week. So it had a nice move. Uh, it's, it's, it's looking better for Apple. I hope the, the move up continues. Let's look at um, Tesla. Tesla here, let's blow this out a little. Open it up. Tesla. Um, you know, here's the 200 day moving average. Let me take this, this triangle out of here, see it a little better. Tesla has been hugging along the 200 day moving average. And here's the 20 day moving average had a pretty good move this week, stayed above the 200 day. So this is a little constructive here. Um, you know, it's gotten away from the support down around 550 and, and is around six low 620s right now. So, uh, Tesla, has had a little bit of an up move over the last two weeks or so. So that's constructive. I know there's a lot of bullish Tesla players out there. So let's see what it can do next week. Uh, let's take a look at some other charts, see what happened on some of these this week. What do we like to look at? Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. We like to look at, well, AMD, we can go back and look at AMD. AMD had a pretty, pretty nice move the last two days, around four or $5 on Thursday and Friday, it, it, it remained on those highs. So AMD has gone from the bottom of this channel and has moved back up. Um, let's take this line off of here. So AMD um, looks like it wants to start moving higher again. It's above the moving averages, which is good. And I'll blow this up a little. It's above the 200 day, 20 day and 50 day. Had a nice strong power move this uh, Thursday and Friday. So let's see if AMD could keep the momentum higher and start to get back moving towards all all time new highs again. Uh, what else we got? What other stocks do we want to look at? Um, Netflix. Anything going on with Netflix? Netflix is still stuck in the channel. Well, let's take a look at Cisco and Oracle, two stocks I think I highlighted last week. Cisco was making the ascending triangle okay typically when it blasts through the ascending triangle when it blasts through the resistance it should keep going which it did a couple days of a movement above the resistance line but like with everything else this week it got knocked back down it had fall, it's fallen through the triangle fallen down below the closed below the 50-day moving average is that enough to say the bull market's over for cisco i don't know i don't think so we can draw we can draw a support line here. We can, you know, attach some of these lines, you know, give us another, another support layer, see if it will fall below this line. But Cisco's in a nice upward trajectory. Um, 
you know, stocks move up and down. That's all I can say. And, um, you know, unless there's some major catalyst to really say, you know what, Cisco's days are over. They're going out of business, which hasn't happened. You know, this is a temporary pullback. And over time, it just should keep going up. Let's take a look at Oracle. Same thing with Oracle. We had the ascending triangle with the flat top. Here's, you know, it had a nice support, ascending support. Blasted well above the, the triangle, but just came off this week, just like everything else. So it's fallen below the moving averages, falling outside of the triangle. Uh, well, what do we think? Well, once again, we can also draw, uh, you know, trend line here. Depends on how far back you want to draw the trend lines. You can use these lines here. That goes like that, or you can go up this way. So, you know, Oracle has some support. Oracle actually did, now that I think about it, it had earnings this week, right? And the numbers were good, but for whatever reason, the market knocked it down. We actually took a position we're put option sellers. So we sold some put options on Oracle after the drop. One of the things we like to do is if a, if a quality stock has a big down move due to a, maybe a one-off earnings announcement, we'll step in. So we sold some put options. We sold some put options, but we use strike prices um, way down here, Oracle. Way down here, strike prices. We have a lot of buffer for movement. You know, we sell out of the money put options. So we have a lot of buffer down here. And so that works for us. Uh, you know, Oracle, what will go, it will go back up over time. This is just normal gyrations. So that's, you know, that's just, you have to look at what the, the price action is telling you. Okay, so let's see what else we can take a look at. Move this up here. Oops. Do this, move this. Okay, we got to adjust this. What other stocks do we have to look at? Um, Procter & Gamble, Procter & Gamble, still in kind of a channel here. Walmart took it to the downside a little bit this week. Walmart getting hit. Um, yeah, you know, Walmart's a, a, you know, a stalwart. If you have thoughts about getting bullish on Walmart, I don't know, maybe you wait for, the, for it to find its footing. Our size coming down. I have no position in Walmart. Nothing going on for me right now. I, I don't really have much to say about Walmart. Merck, some of the healthcare stocks. Um, Merck has been moving up nice. He's got above the 200-day moving average. So you want to follow the, the price. Want to follow the price action and see what's happening. <clears throat> um, let me see if there's any other, any other stocks we like to look at here. Um, oh, let's take a look at hmm, McDonald's. Anything in McDonald's? Nothing there. Pepsi. Anything on Pepsi? Oh, Pepsi was making another, was also making a triangle pattern. It's falling down below it, sitting on the 50-day moving average. So you want to watch the price patterns. What else do we like? Uh, do we want to look at GameStop? We always look at GameStop. Some of the meme stocks. GameStop. Let's look at AMC real quick, and we'll call it a day. AMC still going up, still going up there. It's incredible, some of these meme stocks. And let's look at the Bitcoin stocks. Riot. Riot is, um, it, has, it bounced nicely off the 200-day moving average, has this little up move, but it's hitting resistance on the 50-day moving average, the downtrend moving 50-day moving average. So you have to follow Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin has come off a little bit as well. All right, so there you go. Let's wrap up here. Let's take a look at the SPY one more time. We'll call it a day. Market, the overall market is still in an uptrend, still in an uptrend. Yes, had a little pullback this week. Um, Want to see what happens over the next couple of days if it finds its footing and starts to move back higher. So follow the price action. Stay long-term. And think about those deep in the money call options that we looked at earlier. All right. Well, that's it for me today. Um, I want to wish all the fathers out there happy Father's Day tomorrow, Sunday, June 20th, 2021. Don't forget to tell your dad jokes. Everyone loves those dad jokes. One of my, one of my favorites is that, uh, you know, I didn't like my beard at first, but then it grew on me. But I'm bump. Get it? 
literally grew on me. All right. So that's all for me today. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.